Uh, so I'm Rob Sherwood, CTO at Big Switch Networks, and now I'm just going to jump to the graphical user interface of our product and show you guys what it actually looks like in practice. Um, while I pull this up, funny story. Um, actually, let me refresh this here. Um, so when you guys came for Network Field Day 8, you had the same request for a wired uh, internet connection. And so I was like, well, we've got a multi-tenant fabric. Let me put this into, uh, let me put this, let me configure up you know, this wall jack here. We gave you guys your own little tenant and you've got your own little access and I set up the access control so you can't touch the rest of our network. Um, and you know, it worked and everything was happy. I forgot to mention it at the time. Um, and then you know, we got the request uh, from Tom 48 hours ago or so. I was like, you know, we never cleaned up that config. And so this desktop network is the most brass tacks alpha network that I've ever seen. Anytime we get code that's like in, that mostly compiles, we will put it on this alpha <laughs> network. And so the fact that the config snippet from a year ago survived every upgrade that we've done, both like release and non-release, I was pretty impressed. I have to say, like, uh, I, I thought that was kind of cool. But so what we're looking at here is the landing page. You know, actually, I may put this into the dark mode to make it. Is this easier to see with the lights, or do you guys want me to? I think the, the other way. way is the other way looks better. The other way is easier? All right. <laughs> um, so what we're looking at here is some random stats about, you know, how many, you know, what the IP address is and whatnot. We've got this nice new visualization now. It's kind of cheeky, but it, it turns out that uh, if you want to track, you know, 30 plus switches, and you want to see if anybody's running high on memory or, or CPU, you kind of need something like this. Um, remember, we have segments, we have tenants, uh, we have top talkers by tenants and segments, uh, we have top talkers by interfaces. If you click on fabric, you actually get um, this is the physical view of the network. So the network that you know the live stream is going over right now is a four plus two leaf spine fabric. Uh, it has an active and a standby controller. If you click on uh, one of the boxes, it shows you all of the links going to it. Notably, these are actually color coded by utilization. So utilization is extremely low right now, so everything is green and happy. Um, there's just a, a slew of useful information here in terms of what ports are up, what switches are up. Um, you know, I can click on a switch. This is our GUI guy just going crazy. Um, you know, this is actually a accurate visualization of the switch. So he actually went down to the data center and took a bunch of pictures of the switches. Like, um, so I clicked on a, a, a leaf switch. If I click on the spine switch, you actually get the different breakout cables with that. Um, the, um, the ports, like the, the LED indicators are actually accurate. Um, if we are cheeky and spin it around, uh, you can actually see like this. Um, Not plugged in. The light for this fan is off because the fan is actually disabled for this switch. I, it, it's kind of cool to not have to get up to, to go check this out in person. Yeah. Um, I did want to say, um, so the network that we're on does not have a lot of virtual switches connected. So just to see, uh, so these are the spines, these are the leaves, these are the virtual switches. So this is a, a view into a different network that we have, a test network. But just to give you a feel for what virtual switches look like. And if you mouse over this, it tells you all sorts of things, like how long it's been connected, what its MAC address is, and things like that. There's a lot of useful information displayed here. And everything that I'm doing and showing you here, minus the visualizations, works on the CLI. So don't think that the CLI doesn't get the love that it needs. We understand that a lot of networking people want their CLI. Um, like if I, one more gratuitous thing, like. If you mouse over a port, it gives you all sorts of useful information about you know, what's the optic that's plugged in, what's the speed that's negotiated, that, that type of thing. Um, more fun, this is the logical network. So you guys can't quite see this, but so basically there are a bunch of tenant routers that I talked about. There's the system router, the, the one that connects the tenant routers. And if there's a dotted line, that means it's not connected to the system router. It has no path to the system router. And then from the system router, we have a specially ded dedicated um, egress tenant. So all of the connections to the outside world are via the system router to the egress tenant. And so it's really easy to see 
tenant by tenant, application by application, can you reach the outside world or not? What are the policies that, that affect that? Um, now I'm going to click on the guest wired tenant and first I'm going to do the graphical view. So this is the NFD8 setup that is still here and working. Um, Note we, and I'll talk about this briefly, but you know, we, we've now got uh, better support for quality of service. So you can see it's matching quality service traffic class zero. It connects to the guest wired tenant router. You guys are the only connection off of that, uh, which has the system router and then the path out. Now, if we go back to the stats view, we see there was a huge spike here. I'm gonna guess that's when things rebooted. Yeah, because we, we had a reboot here. So these are live statistics about the, uh, about the web streaming. Um, and this, I'm going to blow this up a little bit easier for folks to see. Sorry, I should have done that earlier. These are the policies that I have set up that ensure that you can go to the outside world through the tenant, but everything that's in 10 slash 8, which is, by the way, our internal network, gets null routed. But there's an exception to that. You know, this is you know, uh, uh, shortest path, uh, uh, lo li shortest path, uh, longest pre prefix match. You do have a hop to the next hop to the, you do have a route for the next hop to the system router. So basically, this is how I configured you guys for the wired network to have a path to the outside world, a path to nothing on the inside. Um, but you know, maybe I screwed it up. You know, th this is a little bit complicated, right? So why don't we go to our? Let's see what endpoint is on here. No endpoints. Did I type that wrong? Do, 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 do. So this is by this is the same network that I. Yeah, this is the same network that I actually read my mail on. So um, this is the host that is one of your guys' web servers. And I'm going to say, can you talk to? Oh, not that one. So that's actually my desktop. Can you talk to whosoever Mac that is? And I'm going to do a little drop down here, and I'm going to say test the path between those two points. And so what this tells me is this is the logical path. So from the NFD8 segment, we hit the guest wired router. It hit the default permit policy. That's why it's going to go to the system router. Then it hit the default permit, and then to here and to here. Oh, so sorry. That's what's important. So what that says is that box has permission to talk to you guys. You don't have permission to talk to it. So you know, from here, the policy you hit is default permit, but the route you hit has the null route. So this is why you guys can't talk to the random box that I picked. Does that make sense? And so actually, I actually thought I had a pretty secure network set up. I, I, I helped design the system. I, ideally, I would do that. But this tool helped me figure out a, a problem with it, which is you know, the security policy is unidirectional. Maybe I want it bidirectional. I, that, that honestly, like, think of me as an expert for this, because I helped design it. Um, I didn't even realize that the security policy I set up allowed traffic in one direction. And with this tool, now I could figure that out. Right? That's how valuable this tool is. Questions, comments? Are you able to put in um, external appliances, like say a data center firewalls or something, and you wanted to see that in your path? So, um, do, do, do. I know the answer is yes. I have to admit ignorance. I don't remember how to do that off the top of my head. Um, I know you can give it external routes, and it will tell you here's the path to the external. Um, basically, it will tell you up until the, the edge of the fabric that yes, you went to the external tenant. Okay. In your case, could you do that same, you know, accomplish the same thing without having a, a null route? Or right, typically, if there's no route there, it's going to drop anyway. So I guess, you know, what other methodology could you use to accomplish the same thing? I mean, thing? so I could have used an access control list. Um, this was the slapdash easiest way for okay. me to be sure that I, that 
you know, that there, there was, because I know that all of our traffic is, alloc all of our IPs are allocated in 10 slash eight, that was the easiest way that I could think of. There's probably a whole bunch of other ways to do this. Got it, okay. And, and if you're doing your service insertion you guys do, this would be the same. Exactly. Right here. And should. so it would actually tell you, you know, you're trying to get from here to here, but you're going to this other service here. Hmm. So I, I, I should mention, because I don't have a slide on it, the, the way we do service chaining is inside a tenant router, you create another segment for the services and you say, if you're going from segment A to segment B, the policy is don't go direct, go through segment C first. That's how the service chaining works. And that would just show up here and you could use test path to actually verify that that was working correctly. Um, one more thing that I think is just really cool. So this was, remember I was mentioning the uh, fabric analytics? Um, Click the button to show the CLI changes in the last 24 hours. How many of you have wanted this button? <laughs> <laughs> and you can kind of like zoom in. It's All right. Yeah. Somebody keeps running the command debug bash. This is to, to drop from the, the controller to a shell, right? But you know, this, nice. th this is actually an active debugging network. So who, who knows? I, I won't dig too much. This is a live network too. So if I screw this up, the feed stops. So <laughs> uh, I, I won't screw with it too much. Um, but you know. Major event, and so if you aren't familiar with Elasticsearch, you, you can actually create these. Um, you can create reports. You can create extensions on top of it. This is actually an open source uh, engine. Are you going to go to Kibana Four? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I laugh because a, a friend of mine actually works on Kibana. Is staying with me, and he asked me, like I was showing this him last night. He's like, "Why are you on Kibana 3? Um, he also recommended, and I have it from the horse's mouth, that maybe it's uh, I should wait a little bit until they uh, stabilize a couple things. So we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Short run uh, to yes, it's just. Yeah, it's more of a matter of timing. It was still easier to do stuff in three though. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a lot more that I would like to show you. Prashant, am I forgetting anything? Yeah. So let, let, let's, let's move on in terms of time. Uh, but the, the critical thing, and particularly for those playing in the home game of this, um, all of this is available for you to play with yourself online with BSN Labs. So. If you think I'm showing you the canned demo and it's all going to break, if you hit this other button, play with it yourself. 